Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Everybody needs to have a stockpile of food and sometimes we run out of regular places in our pantry and so one of the things that I've done is create a secret pantry. I made a video about it quite a while ago and what I did was I cleaned up a bookshelf that had things that we weren't really using and I used that as a secret pantry. I repurposed it in another room that could easily store extra supplies that I need. Once you've made a food stockpile, whether it's your regular pantry, your prepper pantry, or your secret pantry, you need to make sure that you're using those foods. You should only be buying foods that you're willing to actually use. So once you use them, you want to replace them, and you also need to be sure that you're rotating your food. You want to have just like they do in the store, you want to take the oldest and push it to the front of the shelf and replace it in the back with the new supplies. It can be difficult when we've stashed things in lots of places to remember what we have and that we need to be rotating and using all of it and then replacing it, of course. But it's a challenge that you need to find a way that works for you, whether you're taking your prepper pantry, you're moving into your working pantry, and even your secret stash. You need to make sure that you remember those items and try to rotate them in a reasonable amount of time. Lots of foods have best buy, use by, sell by dates on them and lots of foods will last longer than that but not always so you want to make sure that you're paying attention to those dates that you're rotating and using the food and then checking on it periodically to make sure that nothing has happened that something got in and chewed on your food, bugs got in it, cans exploded. There's always challenges to having a stockpile. So it's important that we monitor the foods that we have so that they will last and we get the full value out of them. The first item I got from my secret pantry is this great big bag of rice. It's 20 pounds and it was only $9.50. When I wanted to just buy a small bag, it was about $5 for a four pound bag. So for less than twice as much, I could get 20 pounds of rice. Now, this isn't gonna last for long term in the bag. You need to uh, store it in an airtight container so that it'll last longer. If you're planning to use it soon, then it's okay to leave it in the bag. But for the, to last the longest, you want to repackage it for long term because things like rice, will last for decades if you store it properly. Next I bought two boxes of Triscuits, which is my favorite, the avocado cilantro lime. These are delicious and I like to have these in my prepper pantry. Next I bought a box of Blue Diamond Almond Nut Thins. These are really good. They have nuts in them and they add a different profile of flavors that you can add into your prepper pantry. It's nice to have variety but if you haven't ever tried something and you want to know if it's any good, buy one and try it and if you like it you can go back and get more. Don't stock up before you know that it's something your family will enjoy eating. I've been lucky enough to spend time with my grandchildren. They've been able to visit me and I've been able to visit them. And one of the things that's nice to have, whether it's for little kids or yourself, are the little packs of Jello and pudding. So I was able to get four packs. I have red Jello, orange Jello, chocolate and vanilla pudding. And those are gonna be handy. They don't have to be refrigerated. They're great to have for just grab and go snacks. You can also, if you wanted to, put them into an emergency meal pack that you could grab and go and take with you. Probably not your bug out bag because you want something that is more compact and provides more protein, nutrition, and uh, something like a granola bar or a protein bar would be better for your bug out bag than something like a pudding or a jello. But these are extra nice to have on hand for all kinds of situations. The price of coffee is going up dramatically, so I stocked up on a few more bags of a brand of coffee that I like. So if you're looking for coffee in the longest term, the best way to buy it is the freeze-dried instant coffee because bags of coffee are going to go stale after several months, maybe even a year, even if you buy the beans and grind them yourself. They aren't going to last as long as freeze-dried instant coffee. So buy the coffee that you can rotate in the amount of time before it'll go stale and then for the longest term stock up on some instant coffee if it's something you want to have on hand. 
If you're not a coffee drinker but you want to have some on hand for all kinds of situations, get a little bottle of the instant freeze-dried coffee. It doesn't cost very much. It can last nearly forever and then you can have it if you want coffee someday or you have it then for a barter item if you need it. Next I bought some household supplies. I bought a big bag of Epsom salt. Epsom salt is great. I did a video on all the different ways you can use it. Everything from in your garden, in your bath, for first aid, and there's just all kinds of ways to use Epsom salt. So I'll put a link to that video if you're interested in ways to use Epsom salt all around the house, your garden, and for first aid and health. I generally like to use the dishwasher pods, but they don't seem to last as long as say a powder detergent because they seem to in moist in human environments they seem to actually get sticky and they stick together and they may not seem to last as long so I got a couple of boxes of dishwasher powder so that it'll last longer one thing I found was I like to get just the plain unscented ones and these were lemon that's all I could get and I don't really like buying the lemon because I always feel like there's a scent still on my dishes after they've been rinsed and put away and I don't want my dishes to have an, a fragrance or an aroma. So when you're stocking up, try to look for varieties that you enjoy and look for options if you can't find the items that you want. Burt's Bees Baby Wash. This is great. You don't have to be a baby to want to take care of your skin. But if you have products like this, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's going to be safe to use on your skin. So I bought two of these. Remember during the pandemic when you couldn't get wipes for any price anywhere? Well, they're available again and they're still kind of handy to have around. It's maybe not something you want to use every day, but you could. They're easy to just pull them out and wipe up messes and help keep things clean and sanitary. So you might want to stock up on some of these types of cleaning wipes if you can find them available again because, you know, the day came when we wished we had them and we didn't and now we don't have to worry about that again. One of the tips that I do is I store them with the lid upside down because then the moisture is down near the top and it's not evaporating out plus uh, then when you turn it over to use it the top ones are going to be wet more than just onto the bottom and that's a tip that works for me. So you might try that. You may have seen people wearing masks again. We know that cold and flu season are coming even if you're not concerned with COVID, which many people still are. If you find face masks, it might be a good idea to pick up some extras to have on hand. Then whether you feel like you have a cough or a cold or someone else might, this gives you a little bit of extra protection. And if they become required again, then you'll have them on hand and you don't have to worry. Lubriderm Daily Moisture is a cream that I like to use. I put it on my face. I can use it all over my body from head to toe and so it's nice to have it on hand. I have rosacea so I have very sensitive skin and so for me to be able to find something that I can use on my face that doesn't make it worse uh, is something that I want to make sure that I have plenty of. The older we get the more we need to make sure that we're moisturizing, moisturizing, fighting those wrinkles and bags. And finally, not something I use regularly, but it might be great to have in an emergency, is some of the Drain Clog Cleaner. I don't recommend using this on a regular basis, but sometimes we have an emergency when we need to get something unstuck. And it's extremely expensive to call a plumber. Some of the things you can do to avoid having clogs are to clean hair away from the drains. Don't let hair go down the drain. Wipe it up with a tissue and dispose of it. Then you can also pour things like salt and hot water into your drain. You can put some baking soda and vinegar into your drain. I'll put a link to a video I made on natural ways, simple ways that you can unclog your drain without having to use chemicals. But if that doesn't work, you might want to have some of this on hand for those dire circumstances. So look over the items that you use. What are some foods that you eat on a regular basis? What are some day-to-day -day cleaners that you use? Body washes, body lotions, shampoos, toothpaste, all of the products that you use for hygiene, first aid, things to keep your home clean and functioning are the items that you want to have extras. 
Think of your prepper pantry and your supplies as having your own not only grocery store, but your drugstore and your hardware store, that you have all the things that you need. Nobody knows what's coming, but we know things have been challenging for the last few years. We know there are shortages, prices are rising dramatically, and we want to be able to have the things that we need. If we can go into our stockpile and select the items that we need, we don't have an emergency. We can fix the things, keep our lives going, and that's why I'm a prepper, is I want to have the best outcome and the best life every single day that I have. Prepping is lifestyle insurance that you make each day as smooth as possible. Wouldn't everyone want to be a prepper? I think they should. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.